Welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Anish Koshi. I teach at the English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. This is part one of two modules that we have on question formations in languages as part of the course on grammatical categories in the paper on linguistics. In the first of these two modules, we will be discussing one of the fundamental types of questions that is found globally in world languages, the type known as polar questions or yes-no questions. Questions form one of the most fundamental aspects of human communication and thus are universally found in all world languages. Questions can be understood as any type of expression that seeks an answer. It is therefore rightly claimed that it is not in the form of the sentence but in the intention behind the sentence that qualifies something to be a question. This can be clearly seen in the case of many sentences that take an outwardly form of a question but do not seek an answer. For example, a sentence like, how beautiful this painting looks, has the structure of a question but is not a question. Since questions do not make an assertion about the truth of an event having taken place or of its possibility of taking place, in many languages, questions are often associated with an irrealist mode. There is also a very clear grammatical relationship between questions and statements in most languages, wherein it is often taken to be true that questions are derived by some grammatical process from corresponding declarative sentences. Let us now look into the typology of questions. Questions are broadly classified into two types. A. Questions that seek confirmation and B. Questions that seek information. Based on this type, they are usually classified into polar questions, also known in the literature as yes-no questions and content questions, also known in the literature as WH questions. The term polar question is quite misleading as though the only possible answers lie at the two extremes as yes or no. As noted in the literature, the answers to polar questions could actually be any inner scale. Like if somebody asks you, are you coming? You may say perhaps, possibly, quite likely, etc. Apart from these two major types, languages also have what are known as alternate questions as well as rhetorical questions. Since questions are an important part of the linguistic makeup of a language, we have devoted two modules to their study in this course. In the sections that follow in this module, we shall be looking in detail at the polar type of questions and their properties. We'll also briefly consider the alternate type of question as they are quite similar to the polar questions. Polar questions are understood to be those questions for which the information sought is usually answered in the form of a confirmation or disconfirmation, that is a yes or a no. This can be done in two ways as you can see in the parallel questions now on your screen. Did the president apologize for the genocide? Was it the president who apologized for the genocide? Was it the genocide for which the president apologized? In one, the person seeking information is not completely sure of a particular fact or situation being true and therefore seeks confirmation. In sentence 2a on your screen, the person seeking information knows that someone has apologized for a particular crime but seeks to confirm if it was the president who had apologized by focusing on that particular argument. Similarly, in question 2b on your screen, the person seeking information knows that the president has apologized for something but seeks to confirm if it was the genocide for which the president had apologized by focusing on a particular constituent. This phenomena of focusing on a particular constituent may be achieved by a copula structure like the ones that you saw just on your screen or by placing the accent on the constituent to be focused or by the addition of a particle or clitic to the focused constituent. We will discuss this in some detail later in our discussion. We will now discuss in detail how 
polar questions are formed cross-linguistically. Polar questions may be indicated by the use of one or more of the following strategies in languages. The first of the strategies that we discuss now is the use of a specific intonation pattern. In many languages, polar questions are indicated by the use of a specific intonation on a declarative sentence. There may not be any other morphological or syntactic changes accompanying this specific intonation. For example, in informal speech, English declarative sentences like the ones now on your screen can be said with a rising intonation and they will be taken to be questions and appropriately answered. In such languages, there is a clear distinction between the intonation pattern used for declarative statements and for questions. In the examples that you see now on your screen, we present two parallel structures from English. The first is formed by the usual strategy for polar questions. The second is formed merely by the use of a rising intonation. This is made possible because unlike the falling intonation for statements, English makes use of the rising intonation for polar questions. When it comes to intonation, languages may differ on whether the same intonation pattern can be used for both polar and content questions. For example, while Hindi makes use of the same intonation for both polar and content questions, English uses the rising intonation for polar questions and the falling intonation for content questions. Interestingly, just like spoken languages may use or form polar questions by using only intonation, it is also noted that sign languages may also need not use separate manual signs to indicate polar questions and may indicate them by other means like raising of eyebrows or making of eye contact with the addressee. The examples demonstrate the possibility of forming polar questions in English by the use of a specific intonation on a declarative sentence. Take note of the tone that you hear. Do you think he's not coming for the party? You think he's not coming for the party? In both cases, the rising intonation indicates that this is a polar question and not a statement. Another strategy that is used in many languages to mark polar questions is the use of a specific syntactic pattern or constituent marking. Languages may treat the syntax of polar questions quite distinct from that of content questions. In English, for example, the usual order of the subject followed by the auxiliary is reversed for questions. Thus, if you look at the sentences now on your screen, you can see the following parallel structures. John is planning to leave for London tomorrow. The first two words are John followed by is. When converted to a question, is comes first followed by John. Is John planning to leave for London tomorrow? The use of specific syntactic patterns like this for polar questions is quite common in Indian languages as well. In the Dravidian language Malayalam, the clitic O is used only for polar questions and not for content questions. We will see examples of these in a little while from now. In Hindi, only polar questions require obligatory placement of the question word kya in the sentence initial position. There are some examples now appearing on your screen from Hindi where you will notice that the obligatory placement of the question word in the sentence initial position is contrasted with the placement of the same question word in non-initial positions in content questions. The interlinear gloss in these examples are avoided as it's not very important for you at this point. The question word, you can see them in the bold. You will notice that the same word kya can be used for both polar and content questions in Hindi. However, it can convey a polar meaning only when it is syntactically placed in the sentence initial position as in sentence 7. Look at the sentences. The translation of will Mahesh bring potatoes? Kya Mahesh alu laega? And then that being a polar question, you find kya in the sentence initial position. Now look at the next two sentences on your screen, which have the same word kya, 
but used in a content question they are not in the sentence initial position so you have mahesh kya laega and this is not a polar question because the question is not will mahesh bring something it is what will mahesh bring the other example on your screen mahesh alu ka kya karega is also not a question like the will mahesh bring a uh, bring the potatoes but it is basically what will mahesh do with the potatoes another strategy that we find in languages with respect to polar question formation is the use of a question particle or clitic that we had referred to briefly in the previous section in many of these languages a declarative statement can be converted into a polar question by merely replacing the final declarative marker with a question particle or clitic it is important to note here that while it is quite common to find interrogative particles or clitics in synthetic languages that is agglutinative and polysynthetic languages it is very rare to find question particles or clitics in inflectional languages the question words in inflectional languages mostly appear in a paradigm as independent words a property that they share with modals there are some exceptions that have been noted to this system where modal categories including questions are expressed by inflectional markers but they are quite rare in synthetic languages the possibility to form questions using a bound particle is part of an overall scheme where almost all inflectional processes are expressed by means of bound markers as mentioned earlier in malayalam the question particle or clitic o is added at the end of the declarative sentence to make it into a polar question this may sometimes involve the replacement of the last sound with this clitic this can be seen now in the examples that appear on your screen we have made the question particle as well as the sound that the question particle replaces in bold so he came is avan vannu with a u at the end and to ask the question whether you ask did he come it becomes avan vannu where u gets replaced by o another example that you can see on your screen is he will come avan varu and then to convert it into question will he come the o particle is added at the end and it becomes avan varumo you can follow the other examples on your screen now that follow a similar pattern so avan varunnu avan varunno avan vannilla avan vanniliyo and the like another strategy that we find in languages with respect to the formation of polar questions is the use of tag questions this tag has language specific properties you are quite aware of the properties of the tag questions in english we know that in english tag questions are formed by making use of the auxiliary verb of the declarative sentence and if there is no auxiliary found then a dummy do verb is used to form the tag question and the subject is then uh, used after the auxiliary in the form of a pronoun the polarity of the auxiliary as part of the tag question is opposite to that of the polarity of the auxiliary in the declarative sentence the tag question in english can be said with a rising or a falling intonation when said with a rising tone it functions like a true polar question that seeks to know if the proposition expressed by the declarative sentence is true or false whereas when said with a falling tone it merely seeks an agreement from the listener on the proposition expressed you can also see that in english a positive tag can also follow a positive sentence but that is usually when an additional attitudinal meaning like an element of surprise or sarcasm is to be expressed look at the tag questions now on your screen what you see is that in english the tag questions can either have a rising tone or have a falling tone the tag auxiliary may be of the opposite polarity as that of the declarative sentence or have the same polarity as the declarative sentence so you have sentences like these with the meanings that we discussed a little earlier john is coming tomorrow isn't he john is coming tomorrow isn't he 
John is not coming tomorrow, is he? You expect me to believe you, do you? You won the first prize, did you? Malayalam, on the other hand, makes use of a negative tag word, alle, for all tag questions, irrespective of the polarity of the declarative sentence after which it arrives. Interestingly, the tag question in Malayalam is always said with a rising intonation, whereas no rising intonation is used for polar questions from the usual way. Now look at the examples of polar questions now on your screen from Malayalam which uses the tag word alle. Mahesh is coming tomorrow, isn't he? Translates into Mahesh nale varunnunde, alle. Or Mahesh nale varunnilla, alle. So said with the rising tone. In Hindi, tag questions can be formed by the simple addition of the negation na at the end of the declarative sentence. In Hindi, this tag comes with an expectation of the speaker agreeing to the proposition expressed. Let us now see some examples from Hindi which are now on your screen. Wo aa raha hai. Wo aa raha hai na? Wo aayega. Wo aayega na? Wo nahi aaya tha. Wo nahi aaya tha na? Another strategy that we find in languages in the formation of polar questions is the use of disjunctive negative constructions. This strategy of forming polar questions is quite similar to the formation of alternative questions which we will be discussing a little while from now. In disjunctive negative constructions, a declarative sentence is joined with its negative to express a question. The negative clause, unlike in alternate questions, is generally shortened. For example, in Hindi, polar questions may be formed by adding the sequence ki nahi to a declarative sentence. Here nahi is the negation and ki is a clause introducer. The ki nahi sequence is actually a shortened form of the entire declarative sentence in its negated form. Let us now look at these examples which appear now on your screen. Look at the sequence of examples. You are coming. Tum aa rahe ho. And then the next sentence. Are you coming? Tum aa rahe ho ki nahi aa rahe ho. And then the next sentence again expressing the same. Are you coming? But with a shortened form. Tum aa rahe ho ki nahi. Interestingly, such or not questions are considered rather rude in English because it is perceived to limit the options available to the listener as he or she is expected to agree with the proposition expressed by the declarative part. Another strategy that we find in languages in the formation of polar questions is the use of specific verbal inflection. We've already seen how Malayalam makes use of a particle or clitic O to just convert a statement into a question. Inflectional languages may sometimes also have an interrogative specific agreement paradigm. For example, in Hindi, the subject agreement used in questions is by default masculine if the identity of the subject is not known, as in the example that appears now on your screen. This question though with a masculine agreement can be answered with a feminine subject with appropriate changes in agreement in the answer. So the question who is coming where you do not know whether it's a male or female is asked as con arha hai with a masculine default agreement marker. Another type of question that we want you to be acquainted with along with the polar questions in this module is the alternate questions. Some scholars consider alternate questions to be a type of polar question and they keep the typology of questions as binary as polar and content questions. However, others disagree. Those who argue that this is a type of polar question do so on the grounds that the listener does not have a choice of answering the question outside the options provided in the question. This makes them clearly more like polar questions than content questions. However, 
those who argue that this is not a polar question do so on the grounds that it is not answered like polar questions typically with a yes or no. There are now examples on your screen that demonstrate to you alternate questions. So in English, if somebody asks you, will you go or should I go? You can't really answer this question like a polar question and say yes or no. I mean, if it was just, will you go, you could have said yes or no. But asked alternatively as, will you go or should I go? The listener really does not answer this question as yes or no, but has to answer as either I'll go or you go. A similar alternative question is now on your screen from Malayalam. Again, the question is same. Will you go or should I go? Ni pogunno ado nyan pogete. Asked in an alternate way, the answer is to be given like the same way as it is to be in English. The same question translated into Hindi would read as Tum jar hai ho ki mai jau. In the above examples that you saw, we see quite different syntactic strategies employed to form the alternate questions. The English alternate question is formed by merely conjoining two independently well-formed polar questions. Will you go? And should I go? With a disjunction in between. The Malayalam alternate question is also formed by conjoining two independently well-formed polar questions. However, Unlike the English alternate questions, the Malayalam polar questions involved in an alternate question are not both the same with respect to their modal or attitudinal force. The Hindi alternate question is interestingly formed not by conjoining two independent polar questions but by conjoining two independent declarative statements. Thus we can see that there is enough typological diversity among alternate questions to support those arguing to keep alternate questions as a separate category for analysis and study. Let us now end this module by briefly summarizing the important points that we discussed in this module. In this discussion that we had, we took up an elaborate discussion on polar questions and how they are formed in different languages using different strategies. We also noted that sometimes the same language may make use of multiple strategies to form polar questions. And then we ended our discussion with a discussion on alternate questions, which though uses the syntactic strategies of polar questions is quite different from polar questions in the sense that Unlike the polar questions, they can not be answered as yes, no, perhaps, possibly or the like. The next module on questions will take up the content questions and to read more on the polar questions, we encourage you to go to the UGC's EPG Patshala website and read the text and the examples there in greater detail. Thank you.